Hello listeners, this is Caleb from the Pit Crew at Web ROI. Now today we'll be discussing your website. We'll go over five elements for a good website design and five things you need to remove from your website and why. These tips are created to help you win the race online. The first question to ask is, if you're a business owner, do you have a website? If you do, do you have a good one? And if you don't, it may be time to start thinking about getting one. They say the world is now in our hands and information is right at our fingertips. The internet is fascinating. It continues to transform the way we connect with people, we share information, and live a quality life. A lot of people spend most of their time on the internet. This could be for buying a product or using a service or reading a blog, entertaining themselves, or for various other reasons. Considering the amount of time people spend on the internet, businesses too have for a long time been moving online. Having a website for business owners of any size and a presence on social media has become crucial. If you own or manage a business and do not have a website, you could be losing a lot of potential customers online. Knowing the importance of a website is key to growing your business. Now a website for your business can provide a wide number of benefits, including things like 24 seven online presence. So even during non-business hours, customers can access your website, find out about your services and even get the information that they need, which is one of the key elements in the importance of a website for your business. Another one is 24 seven customer support. Providing customer support is a tough job for any business. However, providing customer support online is easier and more efficient than hiring personnel to provide support. Things like blogs, FAQs, even virtual chatbots help to provide support in a quick and cost-effective manner. A website can also help you establish credibility and build trust. It can also make sales and even bring in more revenue for your business. A website is a cost-effective way to increase visibility perform marketing, and display your portfolio and work. Now that we've established why you need a functioning website, it's important to note that a simple website that functions at its basics simply won't cut it. For your business to branch out to the online world and succeed online, you need a properly optimized website to help with converting website visitors into qualified leads. A big part of a good web design is making sure your website has the important elements it needs. Things like number one, a logo so it's clear who you are. Number two, straightforward and simple navigation to stop all the guesswork. Number three, easy to find contact us information so your website visitors can contact you immediately or easily when they're ready. Number four, a helpful blog with content that helps to educate and prove that you are a thought leader or important figure in your industry. And number five, search engine optimization or SEO. These are optimized keywords and practices to help Google identify you as a valuable business with helpful information to offer. All five items in that list are excellent things to have. On the other hand, there are some website additions which may seem like a good idea, but in reality, they're not. That's because they're distracting, unnecessary, cluttering, or just plain useless. What are these digital pests? Do you have them on your website? How can you get rid of them? Here are five things to remove from your website and why you should remove them. Number one, email addresses. Wait, what? You might be thinking, if I don't share my email address, how will people get in touch with me? The answer, an easy to use form on your contact us page. You know those emails you get begging you to send $4,000 to a Nigerian prince so he can send $4 million back to you? That's a spam robot at work. That evil robot crawled the web, found your email address, decided you needed to know about this brilliant get rich quick scheme even worse, you're going to keep getting those annoying emails. From a return on investment or ROI perspective, 
it's nearly impossible to track what emails are really doing for you. Email links or email addresses on your website can't be measured by Google Analytics, lead to thank you pages, ask the user specific questions, or even route messages to the right people. Why is Frank in facilities getting e-commerce emails? In short, email addresses on your website are terrible for marketing, but great for spam. So here's what you should do instead. Take up the hatchet and remove every email link on your website. Every single one. Don't worry, you'll still connect with people via a strong email marketing program. Once those email links are gone, build a pleasant contact us page with an easy to use form that's not intimidating and doesn't ask for too much information. Create a nice thank you page with extra content and an autoresponder email telling whoever filled out your form you'll be in touch soon. When it's all ready to go, set up your thank you page as a goal in Google Analytics. That way, whenever someone reaches that page, you'll know exactly what they did and how they got there. You'll also be able to track each of these form fills as a conversion or a goal for your own return on investment calculations. Number two, auto playing videos and music. Your website is a place to promote your business, showcase your work, and allow people to get in touch with you. You know what it's not? A movie theater or concert hall. Don't try and be Netflix, YouTube, or Vimeo. Those websites already exist for a reason. Video and audio clips are great to have and can actually help your website in terms of your search engine optimization. But if they start to play automatically, you're going to startle your visitors and possibly even frustrate some. I can guarantee that. When that happens, they'll either frantically search for the volume control on their computer, or they're gonna close your website altogether. For them, that's easier, faster, and safer. Now, instead of welcoming people to your website, you've scared them half to death. And because they've had an unpleasant experience, the chances of them coming back to your website are fairly slim. So, what you should do instead. Video and audio clips are good. Don't take them off your website. You just need to make some modifications to how they're presented. Like, disable the autoplay feature immediately. Do not pass go, do not collect $200, do this now. Like, as soon as humanly possible. Also, use subtitles so people can follow along with the video without bothering other people around them or drawing unnecessary attention to themselves. This also helps with your accessibility efforts. Did we mention you should shut off the autoplay feature ASAP? It sounds like overkill, but there's no better way to annoy and repulse visitors than with video or audio that blares the moment they hit your site. Number three, stock photography. Many years ago, the Nielsen Norman Group, a leading authority in web design, conducted a study about pictures used on websites. Guess what the most hated, cliche, annoying, useless image a website can possibly feature is. Yeah, it's that stock image of a person working at a call center. They're sitting in front of their computer, smiling at the camera, wearing their over the ear headset. You know that really cheesy one. Here's what people think when they see this image. Working in a call center isn't a happy, pleasurable experience. People aren't spending hours on hair and makeup at a call center and call centers aren't that clean. In short, people just weren't buying it. People can smell an unreal or unrealistic stock photo a mile away. According to Marcel Digital, stock photos can negatively impact conversion rates when it comes to measuring your results. Another statistic, marketing experiments found that the web page with an image of a real employee received 35% more conversions and the same page with an obviously stock pick. A conversion here being somebody actually taking an action you want them to on your website. Now stock pictures are not authentic and nobody wants to do business with a website that isn't perceived as genuine. So what should you do instead? If you need to use stock images, invest in the top package you can. The pictures are better and more creative. However, nothing actually beats the real deal. Have it at company picture day where everyone dresses up. It's much better to have a real image of Anne from customer service as opposed to a fake. Are you a contractor? Invest in high quality camera 
and take before, during, and after pictures of your home improvement projects in action. Lastly, when in doubt, snap a selfie with your smartphone. It may be unpolished and not as professional looking, but it has more authenticity than you think it does. You do beautiful work. Show that. Modern smartphones actually take great photos and videos nowadays, and that can work in a pinch. We do recommend considering a professional videographer or photographer to get the perfect lighting and angles to display your work or space, but still, a photo of you or your own work is much better than a stock image any day. Number four, useless 404 pages. So what the heck is a 404 page? Well, a 404 page is what you get when the web page you're looking for doesn't exist. Ideally, you shouldn't have any dead pages on your website. Every link should point to a live, active, and interesting page. But if you do have 404 pages, don't make them boring or empty. Basically, they're telling the user there's nothing to see and there's nowhere to go, except away from your website and probably to a competitor's site. 404 pages are a great way to showcase your company's personality and alleviate some frustration the user is experiencing. After all, they want to visit a page that's not there. Just because 404 pages are bad doesn't mean they should be boring. So what should you do instead? Number one, test every link and page on your website. Number two, make sure they all work and don't point to any dead, empty, or non-existent pages. Number three, you can then create a super cool 404 page. Think something like a picture of an alien trying to work on an earthling computer. Then number four, write a funny apology message, something like, oh no, it looks like the aliens abducted this page. We've sent the space rangers after them. Number five, give people clear options where to go next, such as back to your homepage, or encourage them to read some case studies or visit your About Us page or even your blog page as another resource. Whatever you do, just don't leave them hanging. A 404 page is like a dead end. In the real world, you turn your car around. In the online world, people can just smash through it by leaving your website. Don't give them that option. Finally, number five, long jargon-filled paragraphs. In his classic book on writing, Hey Whipple, Squeeze This, Luke Sullivan explains why the stop sign is the most effective communication piece ever written. He said, a stop sign is relevant. It's simple and easy to understand. It says, stop. It doesn't say, please bring your vehicle to a speed not exceeding zero miles per hour at this coordinate in space and time, as there is other vehicular traffic moving in a direction perpendicular to your own and may intersect with your vehicle's current trajectory. It says, stop. The content on your website needs to be that short and simple. For example, if you're a niche retailer selling dog treats, do not say you offer canine delectables. Say you carry dog treats. It may sound eclectic, modern, or even more interesting, but Google doesn't buy that, unfortunately. Google looks for plain and simple text. People understand the simple content better too. People don't read long copy blocks, they skim looking for certain words. If your content is long and filled with complicated words, people will find your website uncomfortable and probably end up going somewhere else. So what should you do instead? First, look at and read every word on your website. Are they presented in big, long chunks? Do they use jargon your prospective customers, and even Google, will understand? If they do, it's time to edit. Break up paragraphs into two to three lines at max. Use subheaders to introduce what each section of the page is about, and use bullet points to highlight important items. You'll also want to simplify your text. Remember, you're not writing it for you, but for people who want to buy from you. It's gotta appeal to them. When it comes to your products or services, your visitors only care about what benefits it can provide them. The copy on your page must answer that question as quickly as possible. So, now, with all of that said, is it time to clean up your website? No doubt, your website has some valuable information on it. However, it may have some pesky pieces which are preventing it from delivering the high quality leads your business needs to grow. And the last thing you want to do is eliminate the good stuff and retain or even enhance the bad stuff. It's like that classic song by The Clash. 
Should I stay or should I go? Time to start thinking about that. Do you need help identifying what needs to be removed from your website? Maybe you're ready for a brand new website altogether. Contact the experts at Web ROI and get ahead of your competition and win the race online. Visit our website at webroi.ca, that's W-E-B-R-O-I.ca, or give us a call at 1-877-7-WEB-ROI. That's 1-877-793-2764. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast so you get notified every time a new episode drops. And we'll see you on the starting line.